Hey guys, we're at a house checking out a downflow mobile home system. So we gotta take the filters out. They look pretty nasty. So I'm gonna clear this area out, see if I can get this door to stay on this furnace. I said there's some water underneath it, but we also have our uh, our lines for the washer there too. So we'll see where the water's coming. Here's our pressures right now on our system. It's you know 50, 145, a little low looks like. We'll let it run for a minute. It's our setup. Kind of noisy, a little jumbly. I repaired this one a few years back in the middle of the night when the condenser fan motor went out on it. But looks like we uh, might need a little refrigerant on this one as well. We'll let it run. We'll see what the temperature split is here. Let's see. Where is it at? Blah, blah. 14.4. Let's see what our target is. Go over here to system performance. Yeah, return split's not high enough. We'll see in a minute. See if we can get that return. It should be. Let me check on it. Our return air is a little bit chilly. We have a 65% relative humidity, which puts us in the range of around 15 degrees, which is not too far off from where we're at. Well, most trailers have low airflow. In manufactured homes, this is modular. But most of them have low airflow, so we can't really say definitively that we're good to go just based off that. Because most likely it would have an excessive spread because of the low airflow issue. So we're going to let it roll. See what our superheat comes out like. Because along with the low airflow, we should have a low superheat then too, which we don't have, which indicates we have a low charge. Plus, we don't have very much subcooling, and our head pressure is a little bit low as well. So, I'm going to let it run for a few more minutes and we'll revisit. As you can see, guys, our pressure is coming up to the proper area, suction wise. Our superheat's coming down, so it doesn't look too awful bad right now. Head pressure is still a little bit lower. That might be just because it's more efficient than indicated on the profiling more efficient machine, i.e. I put 10 to 12 sear and it's got a 13 sear coil, so that might be all that is. So right now, check out. out. 12.9 target superheat, 15.7 split. So 15.7 split, we're going to go ahead, I blocked off underneath the door here, and there'll be some cracks here, but we're going to get the DAFM3 take a look at what's going through this grill and there'll be a little bit of excess around the door but we should be pretty close. First time we got 1029 this one time we have 1037 so I'm gonna go with 1030. 1030 through this grill maybe another uh, it's, it's sandwiched in there pretty well so I can't imagine too much getting by there there will be a little bit but less than 1100 for sure let's see what size system we have as you guys can see, we have a T3QC-042K, 3.5 tons. At 1,000 CFM, we're about 400 short. So we should be, you know, really hurting in the suction pressure and superheat area. But our suction pressure is not too far off, but our superheat's definitely a little high. So we could probably add a little bit of refrigerant to that. The coil itself is a 4-ton coil. Our piston may actually still be a four-ton piston as well, most likely, judging from the low amount of subcooling that we have. Probably needs a little bit of refrigerant, probably scan this coil just for leaks just because it looks the way it does, but not too bad off. May need a little bit of a cleaning, but it's not too bad either. Up at the top it looks kind of rough, but not as bad as I thought it would be whenever she called me. This is my leak detector here. I measured airflow with this device, and there's a tip of the leak detector laying down there. This is the evaporator coil, this large copper aluminum was galvanized right there. We look down in the top, and what I see is I see this area right here. Now a darkened area on the coil indicates some oil maybe on the coil oil circulates with the refrigerant inside these pipes so if there's a leak oil will get out and trap dirt so you can sort of see where it's leaking from so I'm going to show you what I found we have our leak detector here here it is I'm going to put it in there that's leaking
it's annoying but true the uh, leak detector doesn't lie so this coil would have to be replaced um, indicated it the inspector wanted it clean there's no point in cleaning it because it's faulty so you replace the coil I just want to show you guys where it was leaking and how I go about finding it. Guys, I'm warming up the H10 outside. Our evaporator was leaking. I want to double check some of the problem areas, meaning the accumulator inside of here. It tended to rust out, and as you can see, or may not be able to see, it's rusting at the bottom. And the machine is 10 years old, but in Nordine years, I think that's like 13 years. So, we're going to take a look around in here. I don't see any oil on the coil or anything like that. It doesn't have service valves, has these little fittings here. So I don't really see them leaking very often, so that's a good thing, but we'll see. I'm about to fire it up and we'll see. Alright guys, we'll take a look at the accumulator over there. Definitely leak in there too. Good grief. Let me see if I can get some bubbles on it. <laughs> 